Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to state the colours of the elements in group 7. You should then be able to describe and explain the trend in melting and boiling points down group 7. And finally, AQA and Edexcel students need to be able to describe and explain the trend in electronegativity. I'm showing you the elements in group 7 here. Group 7 is also called the halogens, and all of the members of group 7 form diatomic molecules, for example F2. At room temperature and pressure, fluorine is a pale yellow gas, and chlorine is a pale green gas. Bromine is a red-brown liquid, and iodine is a grey-black solid. Astatine is highly radioactive and has never been observed. We won't be looking at astatine in this topic. I'm showing you here how the melting and boiling points of the halogens change going down group 7. As you can see, both the melting point and the boiling point increase as we move down group 7. Now, in order to explain this, we need to look at the intermolecular forces involved. If we cool the halogens down, they form a simple molecular lattice, which I'm showing you here. The covalent bond between the two halogen atoms is strong. However, between the halogen molecules, there are induced dipole-dipole interactions. These are also called London forces. If you're following the AQA spec, you can call these van der Waals forces. These intermolecular forces are relatively weak and do not take a lot of energy to break. Now, you need to remember that the strength of London forces increases as the number of electrons increases. Iodine molecules have 106 electrons, whereas fluorine molecules only have 18 electrons. So the London forces between iodine molecules require more energy to break than those between fluorine molecules. And this explains why both the melting and boiling points increase down group 7. Okay, now if you're following the AQA or Edexcel spec, you need to be able to describe the trend in electronegativity in group 7. I'm showing you here two compounds containing a halogen. On the left we have hydrogen fluoride, and on the right we have hydrogen bromide. And I'm showing you the electron shells in these compounds. Now a key idea you need to understand is that halogens are electronegative elements, and we looked at electronegativity in the topic on bonding. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the bonding electrons in a covalent bond. Looking at hydrogen fluoride, the fluorine atom is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom. This means that the electron pair in the covalent bond is more attracted to the fluorine atom than to the hydrogen atom. And because of this, the electron pair in the covalent bond shifts slightly towards the fluorine atom. This makes hydrogen fluoride a polar molecule with the fluorine atom having a partial negative charge. Now, as we move down group 7, the halogens become less electronegative. As you can see, bromine has a greater nuclear charge than fluorine. However, bromine also has a greater atomic radius, so the outer electrons in bromine are further from the nucleus. Bromine also has more electron shells than fluorine. These internal electron shells shield the bonding electrons from the nuclear charge. So together, the greater atomic radius and increased number of electron shells reduce the attraction between the bonding electrons in the nucleus, and this means that moving down group 7, the elements become less electronegative. In the next video, we'll start looking at the reactions of the halogens.